In November's grace the charts did sweetly sway, Rod Stewart's voice in echoes no shade of grey, David Soul's tunes a gentle soothing balm, while Deborah Harry's charms did all alarms disarm, their hits like stars did brightly shine to forever stay. You slash people, it's the 21st of November 1977, and you might be surprised what hits we find in this week's top 10. First up, it's a section that didn't make it through the honeymoon on this year's Married at First Sight. Hello and goodbye. Three in, the three out this week. The newcomers are at number 10 for its one and only week in the big dance. Peter Allen with The More I See You. An Australian legend, Allen was a suddenly discovered hitmaker at a good run in 1977. A great songwriter in his own right, Allen is also noteworthy for only being the second gayest man ever to marry Liza Minnelli. Bursting into the top 10, up from 23 to 9, is more Aussie talent, Marsha Hines on Robbie Porter's Wizard Label, with You. This one spent a whopping 13 weeks in the 10, going all the way to number 2. 16 to 7 is It's Your Life by Smokey, which is, yeah, not my cup of tea, as we'll see later on. But who knows, you may love it. Got no higher than 7. Leaving the 10 this week will form a number 1, I Feel Loved by Donna Summer after 10 weeks up there. Accompanying it are Don't Fall In Love, an Australian record by The Ferrets which made number 2 after 11 weeks parading its charms. And the third record, Boney M's Mar Baker which topped out at 5 after 2 months in the 10. Now, in a slightly new and hopefully sustainable edition, the highest charting record leaving the charts this week was Rio by Michael Nesmith, which had peaked at number 5. The biggest record, at least as I can figure, that entered the charts this week was We Are The Champions by Queen, which came in at number 79. And the next number 1 on the charts this week, well, see if you can guess what it is. At number 10, we have the top Aussie bloke and Academy Award winner, Peter Allen, who was coming off a number one with I Go to Rio with the More I See You. Originally released before I Go, it only made number 60 that time out, but this time it spun its way up to number 10 for a week, but lingered on the charts for an age. The 28 weeks here is so high for two factors. One, it would include its previous run to number 60, but two, and this is important, this chart is a top 100 as opposed to the usual top 40s that, that we're used to. Records can rack up weeks as they build and malinger in the lower realm. Alan was a formidable songwriter, penning classics such as the heartbreaking Tenerfield Saddler, I Honestly Love You for a Living Newton John, I'd Rather Leave When I'm In Love for Rita Coolidge, Don't Cry Out Loud, a song about his dad's suicide for Melissa Manchester, and the perennially mawkish I Still Call Australia Home. As I said, a top bloke, and it was very sad when he passed away in 1992. Nine is Marsha Hines, an adopted Aussie via Boston, with the huge and breezy sounding U. The kind of record we seem to struggle so much to make in those mid-70s years. Having come here with the cast of hair, Heinz was, let's not put too fine a point on it, an incredibly exotic proposition for the Australian market at the time. While she's not in the first rank of sold leader, she was still a very serviceable pop vocalist who has a very loyal audience. Over almost 50 years, only two of her albums have ever failed to make the top 40. Eight is the aforementioned Rita Coolidge with her cover of Jackie Wilson's Higher and Higher. It was on the charts for an age, but again, that includes Climb and Linger Weeks. Made number six after two months in the top ten, and, well, it's kind of nondescript. It's not awful enough to be memorable and not good enough to be a favourite. Here's something that's awful enough to be memorable. At number seven, we have It's Your Life by Smokey, a rare case of a song that I could not remember in the slightest. On listening to it, I'd now give anything to be able to forget it again. A blight on the mighty reputation of R.A.K. Records, it's cod reggae Rod Stewarty type mismatch from a singer in Chris Norman, who has a distinctive voice but seems so unsure of his phrasing here, and the record hobbles and wobbles aimlessly underneath him, only notable for spending five consecutive weeks at number nine later on. The Sexy Six is David Soul with the Neil Diamond Light of Silver Lady, no doubt boosted by his appearance in the top-rating TV show Starsky and Hutch and the Clint Eastwood film Magnum Force, which was the best Dirty Harry film. His pleasant warbling was rewarded with a number one here in each of the UK and the US, and Silver Lady making number five, with its predecessor Don't Give Up On Us making number one. Silver Lady stayed on the charts for 25 weeks and finally checked out at the end of March. David Soul, on the other hand, finally checked out in January this year. 
Now it's time for the trade up, where we shine a light on some criminally neglected records that never made the top 10. This week there are two that stand out. The first is Barracuda by Hart, an enormously popular record, but one we could only be asked to get to number 15. I don't know what this says, but once again, like all record buyer, is an idiot. And here's a curly one Don't Stop by Fleetwood Mac, a bouncy commercial song with that perfect 70s radio guitar solo by Lindsay Buckingham. Not only did it only make number 30, but in the physical era of record sales, given their domination of the album charts, Fleetwood Mac only ever had one top 10 single in Australia, and that was Tusk. 1977 was the year of Star Wars, and of the Eastern Suburbs Tigers winning the BRL, but that's neither here nor there. And the force was with Mecco, who had the theme from Star Wars at number five. It got to number three and spent six weeks on the charts. Mecco was the name of Dominic Monadro, who was one of the most accomplished trombone players in the US. Cool. I know you all want to know what's at number three, but we have to deal with the elephant in the room at the moment, number four. And what's at number four is what used to be at number three, It's All Over Now Baby Blue by Graham Bonnet. It's a stonking version of the song originally on Bob Dylan's Bringing It All Back Home album. Bonnet was only really a successful solo artist in Australia with It's All Over Now Baby Blue and War Bride, a song left over from Saturday Night Fever, making number two. His solo years ended when Richie Blackmore chose him to replace Ronnie James Dio in Rainbow. Big shoes to fill indeed. So here we are at three, and it's that old smoothie, Rod Stewart, with his rather bilious You're In My Heart, his first top ten since he made number two with the salacious Tonight's The Night in 1975. It huffed and puffed its way up to number one for a single week, two weeks from now. I had a dream once that circa 1977 Rod Stewart was my next door neighbour, right next door at number 61. And all the neighbours were like, oh, Rod Stewart can't be living here, it'll be so rowdy and we'll never sleep. But he won us all over by getting his band to come and play a concert in the cul-de-sac. Yeah, pick the bones out of that. The most populous nation never to have won a single medal at the Summer Olympics is the Democratic Republic of Congo. Gene Pitney is the only man to have ever written a number one song, He's a Rebel by The Crystals, for another artist who kept one of his records, Only Love Can Break Your Heart, at number two. The average Australian eats half a tonne of cheese in their lifetime. Facts, facts, facts. If you're all facted out, skip forward now. But if you're a raging, slavering fact junkie, here is... It's Val's Fantastic World of Fact. The biggest riser on the charts this week is That Girl Marsha Hines, up 14 spots to 9 with you. While our biggest faller is Carol Bayer Sager's former number 1, You're Moving Out Today, which is moving out of the top 10, down 11 spots to 25. Carol Bayer Sager wrote a lot of songs with Peter Aller. There's no debutante within the top 40 this week, and in fact the highest new record on the whole chart is a re-entry. Black Betty by Ram Jam, back at 59 after a single week at 95 two months or so back. And the longest running song on the charts is Moody Blue by Elvis Presley, which has been in for a Fernando bothering 36 weeks, but only got to number 17, so I would suggest the vast majority of those weeks placed it outside the top 40. Number one in the US this week was Debbie Boone's record equaling 10 week chart topper, You Light Up My Life, with a month still left on top. The holder whose record she equaled for 10 weeks at number one was none other than the aforementioned Elvis Presley. In the UK, we had ABBA, who were burning up the charts here with the magnificent The Name of the Game, the last song where Stig Anderson helped out with the lyrics. One mere year ago, no prizes for guessing the number one, it was ABBA, of course. They spent 30 weeks at number one in 1976 with Money, Money, Money. And this time next year, well, it's another old smoothie Lionel Richie and the Commodores, who are enjoying their fourth week on top with Three Times a Lady. And the number one album in town this very week was Rumours by Fleetwood Mac, an album that only, considering his reputation, spent eight weeks on top, the first of which came back in April. Rod Stewart's Footloose and Fancy Free would take over the next week. In 1977 is famous, of course, as the year punk rock broke. Our local community station, 4ZZZ, had a bit of a revolution itself that year, whereas it was founded and initially run by hippies and communists, it was overrun by punk rockers and changed to an alternative programming station almost overnight. Each year they have a listener voted top 100 songs, so I thought we might have a look at the top 10s they voted for immediately pre-punk and immediately post-punk. At number 10, the pre-punk entry was Smoke on the Water by Deep Purple. At number 10, the post-punk entry was I'm Stranded by the Saints. Number 9, before punk, was Rod Stewart's Maggie May. After punk, it was Lou Reed's Walk on the Wild Side. Number 8 was Substitute by The Who. Post-punk, it was XGC, Making Plans for Nigel. Number 7, pre-punk, it was Jimi Hendrix with All Along the Watchtower. Jeez. 
I feel like I'm an episode of Barry's channel at the moment, all these old guys. And post-punk it was Elvis Costello with watching The Detectives. Number six was The Who pre-punk with Won't Get Fooled Again, the first record they ever played on 4 Z. Post-punk it was The Sex Pistols with Pretty Vacant. Number five was, oh dearie me, Led Zeppelin with Stairway to Heaven. Post-punk, fortunately, it was Devo with Mongoloid. Four, pre-punk was Cream with Sunshine of Your Love. After it, though, it was Dead Kennedy's Holiday in Cambodia. Number three, before punk was The Beatles with the soppy old Hey Jude. Post-punk, it was The Sex Pistols with God Save the Queen. Two, The Rolling Stones with Jumping Jack Flash until punk came along and number two was Talking Heads as Psycho Killer. And number one, before punk, was Good Vibrations by the Beach Boys. Immediately post-punk, it was the Sex Pistols with Anarchy in the UK. He's out of the hoose cow with the bip-bop pow. It's the mighty Monty the safety monkey to drum up a furor for this week's number one. Aussie gold in the top spot. Humpy Bong Boy Andy Gibb with his seven-week chart top of the absolutely wonderful I Just Want to Be Your Everything. Written by and featuring his super talented brothers, the BM and RGs, this is absolute oral honey that should have been on Saturday Night Fever. It's the kind of song if I hear it, it'll be in my head playing along for days and days afterwards. It was number one again next week before falling to Ward Otters and getting off the charts pretty immediately thereafter. For all his obvious talents, he had eight US top 20s with three number ones in his short life. He only hit the top 10 once in Australia, falling short two other times. Songs that no doubt will be featured in a future trader. Gee, if you're only going to be known for one hit, what a hit to be known for. And that, my pulchritudinous and luminous friends, is how the cow ate the cabbage this week. If the good lords are willing and the creeks don't rise, we'll be back again with a new episode next week. Kish.